In the shadows of a heartless night, a child's world crumbles beneath the weight of his parents' scorn. You're too weak, you're not worthy of being my son, his father's voice slices through the silence like a dagger. His mother's words add to the anguish, it's all because you are so weak and incompetent that your father does not love me. I don't have a son who is as weak and incompetent as you. In the midst of their cruel tirade, the boy pleads desperately, Dad and Mom, don't abandon me. Amidst the darkness of the boy's despair, a glimmer of hope emerges with the announcement of the approaching train station, Dragon City. With a start, the young man awakens from his torment, disbelief etched on his features. I can't believe I actually had such a dream, he murmurs to himself, shaking off the remnants of his subconscious turmoil. Memories of his expulsion from the mountain by his master flood his mind, leaving him reeling with resentment and confusion. As the train pulls into Dragon City, all eyes are drawn to a scene of unparalleled grandeur. Whispers ripple through the crowd as a sleek car glides to a stop, its license plate bearing the mark of distinction. My goodness, what kind of arrangement is this? Look at the car's license plate. Who else could it be, murmurs one bystander, captivated by the spectacle unfolding before them. A figure emerges from the vehicle, radiating power and grace, eliciting gasps of awe from onlookers. Dragon City's Ice Queen, Gu Xuanyan. She is one of the most powerful businesswomen in the world, declares another, her reputation preceding her. In a bold move that defies convention, the young man rushes forward and envelopes the enigmatic figure in a tight embrace. Gasps of disbelief echo through the crowd as spectators recoil in shock. The flower of the high mountain that no one dares to touch. That man is crazy. How dare he touch Gu Xuanyin, the gossip spreads like wildfire. However, instead of rebuffing his audacious gesture, Gu Xuanyin meets his embrace with a knowing smile. Xiao Feng, you finally come down from the mountain, she remarks, her voice laced with warmth and familiarity, behind the closed doors of a luxurious private room, Xiao Feng and Gu Xuanyin share a meal fit for royalty. Each dish is savored with relish as Xiao Feng indulges in the forbidden delights of greasy food. This one is delicious. And this one too, he exclaims, his palate awakened to new sensations. Gu Xuanyin watches him with a mixture of amusement and fondness, allowing him to indulge in the feast before him, as they dine, conversation flows effortlessly between them, punctuated by laughter and camaraderie. Xiao Feng recounts tales of his solitary existence on the mountain, where he subsisted on wild vegetables and the harsh teachings of his master. Gu Xuanyin listens intently, intrigued by his unique upbringing and untapped potential. With each passing moment, their bond deepens, forged by mutual respect and understanding. As the first light of dawn breaks through the window, Xiao Feng realizes that he has found not only a mentor but also a friend in the formidable Gu Xuanyin. And as they embark on a journey of self-discovery and redemption, they are bound together by the unbreakable ties of fate, outside the confines of the grand hotel room, a confrontation brews as guards attempt to block an intruder's path. Sir, this private room is already occupied, you can't just barge in, they assert firmly. The intruder, undeterred, fires back with venom, you must be blind. This hotel belongs to my family, get lost. With a dismissive wave, he strides into the room, his anger palpable. Inside the room, tensions escalate as the intruder confronts Gu Xuanyin with accusations of betrayal. Gu Xuanyin, how dare you do this to me? How dare you go behind my back and have a secret date with a wild man, he seethes. Gu Xuanyin's steely gaze meets his with defiance as she retorts, Li Haoren? Who let you in? Li Haoren, her fiancé, stands his ground, insisting on his right to be there. Should I not have come? Don't forget, you're my fiancé, he reminds her. Gu Xuanyin counters his claims with cold logic, revealing the manipulative tactics of their families. But before the confrontation escalates further, Xiao Feng intervenes, seeking to defuse the tension. As Xiao Feng and Gu Xuanyin make their exit, Li Haoren's anger boils over, his pride wounded by Xiao Feng's presence. Stop right there. Who the hell are you, 
How dare you try to get your hands on my woman, he bellows, his voice echoing with fury. Unfazed, Xiao Feng raises a hand, brandishing a familiar object. Do you know what this is, he asks calmly before delivering a swift blow to Li Haoren's face, leaving him reeling in shock, with Li Haoren subdued, Gu Xuanyan urges Xiao Feng to leave, unwilling to stoop to his level. Xiao Feng, beating him will dirty your hands. Let's give his grandpa some face, let's go, she implores, her voice tinged with resignation. Xiao Feng nods in agreement, eager to leave the confrontation behind. As they depart, Li Haoren's subordinates watch in disbelief, unsure how to react to their master's humiliation. Meanwhile, in the tranquil confines of the Gu family villa, Gu Xuanyan's father seeks answers from her grandfather. Dad, Luo Feng is also that old master's disciple? Why have I never heard about it before? He inquires, puzzled by the revelation. Gu Xuanyan's grandfather, Elder Gu, offers a solemn explanation. I only found out about it just three years ago as well, he reveals, his voice heavy with regret. With a sense of warmth and familiarity, Gu Xuanyan and Xiao Feng step into the welcoming embrace of the Gu family villa. Grandpa, Dad, look who I have brought back with me, Gu Xuanyan announces proudly, her eyes alight with affection. Xiao Feng, equally delighted, greets Grandpa Gu with genuine warmth, Grandpa Gu, I haven't seen you for a long time. You're looking younger with each passing year. Grandpa Gu chuckles, his eyes crinkling with amusement, I haven't seen you in three years, but you have already grown up so much. Stay over here for a couple more days, let's have a chat and a game of chess. As Gu Xuanyan leads Xiao Feng through the expansive halls of the villa, she gestures towards the guest room with a smile. I have already prepared the guest room for you, do you like it, Xiao Feng, she inquires, her voice tinged with anticipation. With a gleeful grin, Xiao Feng bounds onto the bed, his enthusiasm palpable. I love it, seventh sister. I would love to stay here forever, he exclaims, his eyes twinkling with delight, curiosity sparkles in Gu Xuanyan's eyes as she gazes at Xiao Feng, her voice laced with intrigue. What? Are you still thinking of leaving? Are you going to look for the other sisters? She asks, her curiosity piqued. Xiao Feng's response is thoughtful, his words tinged with melancholy. Seventh sister has to marry someone eventually, doesn't she? So how can I possibly stay here for the rest of my life? He muses, his gaze distant. A mischievous glint dances in Gu Xuanyan's eyes as she leans in closer to Xiao Feng, her voice playful. Xiao Feng, do you think I'm beautiful? She inquires, her tone teasing. Xiao Feng's response is immediate and sincere, yes, you are beautiful. Why do you ask? Gu Xuanyan's next words catch him off guard, her proposal daring and unexpected. Then why don't you, just marry me and I shall give birth to your baby, what do you say, she suggests, her voice laced with mischief. Xiao Feng's eyes widen in shock, his heart pounding in his chest. What? Seventh senior sister, I have always regarded you as my own sister, but you want to sleep with me? Are you serious, he stammers, his mind reeling with disbelief. Gu Xuanyan's laughter rings out, her amusement evident. Look at how scared you are, I was just kidding with you, to see if you have learned bad habits, she teases, her eyes dancing with mirth. Relief floods through Xiao Feng as he chuckles nervously, Seventh sister, you really scared me to death just now, with the tension diffused, Gu Xuanyan gently ushers Xiao Feng towards the bed, her voice soothing. All right, you should get some good rest now. I'll take you to a fun place in the morning, she assures him, her smile radiant with warmth. And as Xiao Feng settles into the comfort of his surroundings, he feels a sense of belonging wash over him, grateful for the unexpected bond he shares with his dear seventh sister. Amidst the vibrant festivities of the Dragon City Temple Fair, Gu Xuanyan and Xiao Feng immerse themselves in the lively atmosphere. The Dragon City Temple Fair is held once every year, it's a big festival in this place, so what do you think? It's quite fun, isn't it? Gu Xuanyan remarks, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Xiao Feng's stomach grumbles with hunger as he asks, is there anything good to eat here? 
Gu Xuanyin leads him eagerly towards a bustling food stall, exclaiming, Come on, come over here, there's something even better. Xiao Feng's eyes widen in delight as he takes in the array of delicious treats. There is so much delicious food here, he exclaims, his mouth watering. Suddenly, their enjoyment is interrupted by a familiar voice cutting through the crowd. Li Haoren strides towards them, his face contorted with anger. Gu Xuanyin, how could you dare to bring this trash here at such an important occasion? Are you seriously trying to humiliate my Li family? Do you even have any shame, he accuses, his voice dripping with disdain. Gu Xuanyin's father steps forward, his expression stern. How presumptuous. Who do you think you are talking to? My Gu family never approved of your marriage, he retorts firmly. Frustrated by the confrontation, Li Haoren complains to his father, Li Tianchen, seeking validation for his grievances. Dad, you heard it with your own ears, right? I didn't lie and frame Gu Xuanyin, did I? He pleads. Li Tianchen addresses Elder Gu, seeking justice for his son. Master Gu, don't you think it's disgraceful for you to be letting your granddaughter get away with such behavior? He demands. Elder Gu shrugs off the accusation with nonchalance. It's normal for kids to have a minor spat with one another, and as for their marriage, it was just something I said while I was drunk. It shouldn't be taken seriously, he explains dismissively, however, Li Tianchen refuses to back down, citing Xiao Feng's altercation with his son as evidence of the Gu family's wrongdoing. What about my son being beaten up by this boy? What do you say about that, he presses, his voice rising with indignation. Li Haoren adds fuel to the fire, demanding retribution. I want this bastard to kneel before me in front of everyone and apologize. Gu Xuanyin is my woman, he declares, his eyes flashing with fury. In a swift and unexpected move, Xiao Feng steps forward and confronts Li Haoren head on, striking him across the face. My woman, he challenges, his voice dripping with scorn. Gu Xuanyin quickly intervenes, seeking to defuse the tension. Xiao Feng, it's all right, let's not make a big deal out of it and let people look at you as a joke, she urges, her voice calm but firm. Turning towards Li Haoren, she delivers a decisive statement, I, Gu Xuanyin, will once again tell you, the Li family, that Li Haoren and I have never had any relationship, and will never have any relationship in the future. Do you understand me, or do you still not understand me?" she asserts, her tone unwavering. Li Haoren's father steps in to defuse the situation, recognizing the need for reconciliation. Shut up, are you still not ashamed, he scolds his son, before turning to Elder Gu with a conciliatory tone. It's my family that has offended you. I hope that this incident won't hurt the peace between the two families, he offers, his words tinged with regret. Elder Gu waves off the apology, brushing aside the conflict with a dismissive wave. It's no big deal, young people always fight with each other. You're being too serious, Xiao Li, he reassures, his voice calm and measured. With that, the tense standoff comes to an end as they part ways, leaving the echoes of their conflict lingering in the air. As Li Haoren and his father retreat, a sense of unease settles over them, their minds consumed by thoughts of revenge. Dad, are we really going to just let them go? Li Haoren asks, his voice tinged with bitterness. His father's response is chilling in its resolve. There is no hurry. The humiliation that you and I have suffered today, I'll make that ignorant kid and the Gu family pay back, twice the humiliation, he vows, his eyes burning with determination. And with that ominous promise hanging in the air, the stage is set for a showdown between two powerful families, their rivalry threatening to engulf them all. Inside the confines of the house, Xiao Feng's keen senses detect a masked figure lurking outside his window. Startled, he confronts the mysterious intruder. Did you follow me all the way from the mountain to this place? Didn't you have any sleep at all, he demands, his voice tinged with suspicion. The masked individual responds with a cryptic retort, you obviously care about me, so why are you saying such cold words now? Xiao Feng's confusion is evident as he rebuts, I care about you? The masked figure persists, 
insinuating a deeper understanding of Xiao Feng's true nature. Yes, in the eyes of outsiders, you're nothing more than a stupid kid who doesn't know anything about the world and that you depend on your senior sister to back you up. But I'm the only one who knows exactly how dangerous of a guy you really are. You're just trying to make sure I'm still by your side, aren't you? Now that you have come down from the mountain, are you planning to return home and trample that man under your feet? Xiao Feng's response is measured, his admission tinged with humility. There is no need to hurry yet, because I'm still too weak, he confesses, his voice heavy with resignation. The masked individual's laughter echoes through the room, a mocking sound that fills the air. Weak? You are really quite mortal, they taunt, their amusement palpable, before Xiao Feng can ponder further, Gu Xuanyin enters the room, causing the masked figure to vanish into thin air. Xiao Feng, perplexed by the sudden appearance and disappearance, questions his sister's unexpected entrance. Seventh sister. Why did you come in here like this? He asks, his brows furrowed with concern. Gu Xuanyin, her expression serious, responds with a sense of urgency. Xiao Feng, there is something I want to ask, she declares, her voice laden with purpose. And as the weight of her words hangs in the air, Xiao Feng braces himself for the revelation that is about to unfold. Xiao Feng questions Gu Xuanyan's abrupt entrance, Seventh Sister, why did you come straight into the room? What if I hadn't put on my pants? And what you're wearing is a little too, too revealing. Gu Xuanyan brushes off his concerns, what are you so afraid of? We used to take baths together when we were kids, don't you remember? Xiao Feng insists, Seventh Sister, that was when we were still kids. Now that we have become adults, we have to keep some distance between us. Gu Xuanyin playfully counters, distance? The distance between you and me can be reduced indefinitely. Even if it were to become negligible, it would be fine. Xiao Feng pleads, stop, stop, please stop, you're making fun of me again. It's not funny, please give me a break. Gu Xuanyin relents, okay, okay, I guess you just don't like me. Forget it. If you don't like me, then you don't like me. But I'm warning you, Xiao Feng. If you have an illicit relationship with any of the other six senior sisters, then I will castrate you. Xiao Feng reassures her, rest assured, you are all my senior sisters. I have no such thoughts, Gu Xuanyin suggests they go out for a late night dinner and heads to get dressed, arranging to meet Xiao Feng at the main door. Once outside, the masked man reappears, addressing Xiao Feng, young master, you are really quite lucky. Why don't you just enjoy the delicacy that has come straight to your doorstep? He <laughs> he. Xiao Feng dismisses him, stop talking nonsense. This has nothing to do with you. Since you call me young master, then you should go and do something for me. The masked man eagerly agrees, I would gladly do it. Please give me the order, young master. Xiao Feng instructs him, the Li family was too quick to back out during the day. You go and find out everything about this Li family for me. They must be planning something else behind the scenes. With that, the masked man disappears once again, leaving Xiao Feng to ponder the mysteries surrounding the Li family's actions. Xiao Feng and Gu Xuanyin sit in the car, with Gu Xuanyin asking, Xiao Feng, what do you want to eat? Xiao Feng replies, anything is fine, I will eat with you, whatever you want. As they drive, Xiao Feng notices someone following them in a car and thinks to himself, it looks like I'm being followed. I have to be careful, they arrive at a private restaurant, and Gu Xuanyin suggests, then let's just have some light soup. The waiter escorts them, saying, Miss Gu, this way please. Xiao Feng excuses himself, stating, I'm going to the washroom. I'll be right back. Suddenly, Xiao Feng receives a call, it's the masked man. As the young master instructed, here is the information about the Li family, the masked man says. Xiao Feng responds, I didn't expect the Li family to be so ambitious. And as the pieces of the puzzle start to fall into place, Xiao Feng realizes that there's more to the Li family's actions than meets the eye. Xiao Feng overhears a conversation from outside, where someone pleads, Boss Lu, please forgive me. 
I'm just a student part-timer. I don't want my salary. Can I please go now? Another person responds, Xiao Tang, I'm doing this for your own good. You're going to get married anyway, so why don't you just marry me and you will never have to work hard again. Xiao Tang objects, but you have a wife and I have a boyfriend. The man insists, your boyfriend is just a poor guy. How can he compare to me? Forget about my wife. She will never find out about you. I will treat you well. I guess I will have to give you a hard time for you to be obedient. He instructs his subordinate, look for an empty VIP room, and send her there. I will teach her a good lesson, Xiao Feng can't contain his amusement and bursts out laughing. Thank you guys for putting up this show for me, but your acting was really bad, ha ha ha. You have been following me all the way from the outside. It's about time for me to give you guys a chance to show your true skills. With a mischievous grin, Xiao Feng prepares to confront the individuals who have been tailing him, ready to reveal his own abilities in the upcoming encounter. Xiao Feng retorted, Oh, really? It seems like you all have lost your memory together all of a sudden? You guys want to be featured on Approaching Science, don't you? The man became angry and brandished a knife, declaring, Since that's the case, there is no need to speak anymore. Die, kid. Xiao Feng countered, although I may be weak and not as strong as my seven senior sisters, but I'm not someone you lowlifes can mess with. He swiftly defeated them, but when the man asked for forgiveness, Xiao Feng kicked him away. Another person with the man realized their mistake, admitting, the intel we received was incorrect. This kid is pretending to be a pig while he's a tiger. Let's retreat. However, Xiao Feng kicked all of them before escaping. Grateful for his help, the girl addressed Xiao Feng, classmate, you are really amazing, thank you. But Xiao Feng grabbed her hair and warned, you didn't think that I only had information about male killers, did you? The people from the Li family must be waiting nearby to meet you guys. Take me to them, or else I'll strip you naked and throw you on the road. Meanwhile, outside, young Master Li and his subordinate waited. The subordinate cautioned, young Master Li, you shouldn't have come over here. If something goes wrong, we won't be able to explain ourselves to Master Li and our boss. Young Master Li dismissed his fears, stating, what are you so afraid of? Is it possible for that trash to beat you guys? He is just relying on the Gu family to back him up. He has humiliated me three times. Today I'm going to torture him. Xiao Feng approached young Master Li and taunted, We meet again, little brat of the Li family. The weaklings you sent to me were not even good enough for me to warm up. Here's something that belongs to you. I'm giving it back to you. He snatched the knife and struck young Master Li's subordinate. Terrified, young Master Li warned, You. Don't you come any closer. I'm warning you. Unfazed, Xiao Feng challenged, You're warning me? Who do you think you are to warn me? I'll teach you a good lesson, you little brat. And with that, the confrontation between Xiao Feng and young Master Li escalated, setting the stage for a dramatic showdown. Young Master Li demanded, You, what are you trying to do? Xiao Feng retorted, Don't be afraid, I'll help you to relax. He proceeded to beat him before returning to Gu Xuanyin. Gu Xuanyin queried, what took you so damn long? You didn't go and hook up with some young girl, did you? Xiao Feng denied, I wouldn't dare to do that. I just got a little lost, that's all. Come on, let's quickly eat, I'm really hungry anyways. Meanwhile, in the hospital, young Master Li's father questioned, son. What the hell happened to you? What the hell is going on here? Young Master Li groaned in pain. His subordinate explained, Master Li, we all underestimated his strength. He was too powerful. Enraged, Master Li exclaimed, you piece of shit. A little brat like him was able to defeat a ruthless assassin like you. How can that be possible? Suddenly, someone intervened, affirming, it is true. Master Li, startled, identified the newcomer, Li Tianchen, you used to be an assassin yourself, and yet now you're judging your opponents by their age. 
determined, masterly declared, I don't care. I have to finish him off. The tension escalated as the conflict between Xiao Feng and the Li family intensified, setting the stage for further dramatic confrontations. The next morning, Gu Xuanyan and Xiao Feng found themselves at a medical university. Confused, Xiao Feng asked, Seventh sister, why have we come here? Gu Xuanyan replied, Isn't it because of your second sister? Surprised, Xiao Feng questioned, Second sister is here? Gu Xuanyan teased, What's the matter? Do you want to see her so badly? Xiao Feng hastily denied, No, no, I was just surprised. After all, second sister used to be quite busy all the time. Inside a lecture hall, someone announced, Let's give a warm welcome to Master Qin Baiha of the Imperial Hundred Herb Pavilion as he makes his appearance on stage. Master Qin Baiha addressed the audience, Hello, everyone. I'm an old man, but I have no descendants to pass on my skills. As a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, I have made a decision that goes against my ancestors. I have written a book with all the knowledge that I have learned throughout my life. I will only be selling it to one person, and I will accept him as my own disciple. Anyone with a higher bid? People inside the hall started shouting, eager to become his disciple. Suddenly, Xiao Feng interrupted, addressing Master Qin, Master Qin, why does this book look like something that I wrote? And it's also a draft that my second sister forced me to write when I was a kid. The revelation stunned everyone, and Master Qin panicked inwardly, realizing, damn it, I stole this book from Murong Xiao Xiao's office. I was going to make a fortune from it and run away. How come someone came out of nowhere to expose the truth? Agitated, Master Qin demanded, Who the hell are you? Coming out and spouting nonsense. Where's the security guard? Kick him out. In a sudden turn of events, someone else intervened, declaring, I'll see who dares to touch my junior brother. I, Murong Xiao Xiao, would like to see who is spouting nonsense. The unexpected appearance of Murong Xiao Xiao added another layer of intrigue to the unfolding drama, leaving the audience and the characters alike on the edge of their seats. Master Qin, alarmed, asked, Murong Xiao Xiao? Why is she here? The crowd began murmuring, the true goddess Murong Xiao Xiao has arrived? Is that Gu Xuanyin standing next to her? Who is that brat she is holding beside her? Xiao Feng questioned, second sister, why have you actually come here for? Murong Xiao replied, Xiao Feng, what's wrong? Didn't you want to see me, your second sister? Good kid, you didn't even bother to inform your second sister that you were coming down from the mountain, and then you come running straight here to hang out with the seventh sister? What's this? Am I not good for anything? Xiao Feng explained, No, second sister. I came here with seventh sister because she lives nearby. So I went to her first. Gu Xuanyin, hearing this, interjected, What? Is that the only good thing about me, that I live nearby? Both Gu Xuanyin and Morong Xiao started to argue for Xiao Feng's attention. While they fought, Xiao Feng urged, You two better deal Master Qin first. Morong Xiao asserted, Yeah, right. Qin Biha. Stop right where you are. This treasury of cures for hundreds of diseases was written by my junior brother and given to me as a gift. I have always treated it as a treasure. How dare you steal it? Master Qin conceded, Master Morong, I was wrong. I was truly wrong. Morong Xiao instructed her assistant, Qin Tian, notify all major and minor hospitals in the country that they must never recruit Qin Baiha, or they will be going against me. Morong Xiao Xiao, as they were talking, Xiao Feng escaped from their sights. Morong Xiao inquired, Where's my junior brother? Gu Xuanyan declared, I'll tell you in advance, Xiao Feng will be staying with me at my house from now on. No one can take him away from me. Murong Xiao retorted, Is that so? Well, that depends on Xiao Feng. But if he wants to be alone with me, there is nothing you can do about it. Xiao Feng, outside the university, sighed in relief. Phew. They didn't come after me, did they? The two senior sisters are exerting too much pressure on me. 
he noticed someone pointing him out and saying, Boss, that's him. Then the person approached Xiao Feng, saying, Kid, you can only blame yourself for being too aggressive. You severely injured Li Tianqin's son, and now Li Tianqin wants to see you. Come along with us, don't force us to take action. Xiao Feng retorted, Why don't you make a move and try catching me? They attempted to attack Xiao Feng, but they couldn't touch him. The leader realized, he is trying to escape by dodging and not fighting back? He was really quite strong and ruthless the other day. Xiao Feng thought to himself, my master told me that I should run away from a fight that I'm not sure I can win. The most important thing is to stay alive. As long as I'm alive, there is no need for me to waste my own energy. Suddenly, Xiao Feng hit one of them and made a run for it. Then, someone said, you can run all you want. I'll just go find Gu Xuanyan next. Let me see if she can run. Xiao Feng stopped. The man continued, what? You're not running away anymore? Since the Gu family is the one backing you up, if we wipe out the Gu family, where will you run away to? Xiao Feng challenged, I dare you to repeat what you said just now. Before he could repeat the words, Xiao Feng swiftly hid his face. Everyone became afraid, wondering what had just happened. It was too fast, with just a single punch, he took out the second in command. Xiao Feng declared, anyone who dares to harm my senior sister will be killed. The leader ordered to kill him, but nobody could touch Xiao Feng as he defeated everyone. The leader then took his pistol and said, I can't let you live, or else you'll be the cause of my death. He shot at Xiao Feng, but Xiao Feng remained unharmed. Instead, he retaliated with power and struck the leader. Suddenly, an ominous energy emanated from Xiao Feng, and red marks appeared on his face. Just as things were escalating, Morong Xiao arrived and swiftly administered a treatment, shooting a needle at him. Xiao Feng returned to normal. Gu Xuanyan asked, What has happened to Xiao Feng? Morong Xiao replied, The thing that Master was worried about has finally happened. Xiao Feng's illness has flared up once again. Meanwhile, the masked man watched all this unfold, remarking to himself, a new emperor has been born. In the Gu family home, Xiao Feng was resting, visibly affected by his condition. Gu Xuanyan asked, What on earth is wrong with Xiao Feng? Morong Xiao replied, Xiao Feng is carrying a mysterious bloodline power. As soon as he loses control of his emotions, Xiao Feng becomes like this. Gu Xuanyan inquired further, Bloodline power? Like the eldest sister? What kind of bloodline does Xiao Feng have? Morong Xiao admitted, I don't know the specifics. It is related to Xiao Feng's origins. Only our master knows everything about it. Xiao Feng is extremely talented, he has already mastered the seven great techniques. But our master has instilled in him the belief that he is very weak. That is because master is afraid that he will fight fiercely and end up losing his mind triggering this uncontrollable power of his bloodline. Gu Xuanyan then questioned, So you came to Dragon City because of Xiao Feng? Morong Xiao confirmed, Yes, Master contacted me and asked me to look after Xiao Feng. But then something happened to him right after I arrived. That damned Li family, I will by no means let them off easily. In his dream, Xiao Feng saw the painful memories of his past, where his parents abandoned him deeming him too weak and unworthy to be their son. He woke up feeling disturbed, questioning his own weakness. The masked man appeared at his window, offering cryptic advice about the path of the strong being fraught with challenges. Xiao Feng questioned if he was the least talented among his siblings, to which the masked man acknowledged his siblings' terrifying abilities. Frustrated, Xiao Feng rejected the notion of possessing the qualities the masked man sought expressing his desire for a simple life following his master and senior sisters. The masked man urged him to confront his true desires, to prove himself to his parents and earn their love and attention. Xiao Feng dismissed him and threw his pillow in anger. Hearing the commotion, com Gu Xuanyan rushed in to check on Xiao Feng, asking if he had another seizure. 
Xiao Feng reassured her and joked about her staying awake, warning her about getting wrinkles. Gu Xuanyin insisted on staying by his side, but Xiao Feng worried it might not let him have a good night's rest. In the Li family, the aftermath was grim. The killers meant to be used against the Gu family were all dead. Li Tianqin blamed Luo Feng for the debacle. Representatives from the Dragon Business Association arrived at Li Tianqin's house, admonishing him for raising killers and bringing disgrace to the city's entrepreneurs. Murong Xiao confronted Li Tianqin, revealing her identity as Murong Xiao Xiao from the Imperial Capital's Hundred Medicine Hall. Shocked, Li Tianqin realized the gravity of the situation as the association announced a ban on his businesses. Feeling defeated, Li Tianqin vowed revenge against Luo Feng. A member of the Chu family approached Li Tianqin, offering assistance to deal with Luo Feng and providing a pen drive containing information about a weapon that could aid in his revenge. The news of the Li family's disappearance spread everywhere, sparking speculation about their sudden removal from the business association. Xiao Feng, upon waking up, heard about the Li family's situation and felt elated. However, Gu Xuanyan and Morong Xiao were waiting with breakfast and medicine, insisting that he stay and recuperate for at least a week. Despite Xiao Feng's protests, they convinced him to stay in bed and rest. Xiao Feng asked about the well-being of his senior sisters, and Morong Xiao reassured him, urging him to rest and share his experiences from the past few years on the mountain. Reluctantly, Xiao Feng stayed in bed, feeling the weight of the pressure on his shoulders. Morong Xiao received a call from Qing Tan, prompting her to leave for work, leaving Xiao Feng in Gu Xuanyan's care. Xiao Feng expressed concern for his second senior sister having to work so early. Reflecting on the dynamics when Morong Xiao and Gu Xuanyan were together versus just Gu Xuanyan alone, Xiao Feng pondered. Gu Xuanyan teasingly asked Xiao Feng to physically prove his recovery, but Xiao Feng insisted on resting bidding good morning to Gu Xuanyan. Later, Gu Xuanyan woke Xiao Feng up, and Xiao Feng complained about feeling suffocated by the pressure. Both Xiao Feng and Morong Xiao received a call from an unknown number, learning the shocking news of sixth senior sister's death. In Dragon City Harbor, Chu Tianji had Shen De Xiangxing, Xiao Feng's sixth sister, tied up on a boat. Still pretending to be dead? Chu Tianji mocked, his tone laced with arrogance. You are really quite powerful. It is no wonder that the higher-ups have ended up losing half of their elite experts in order to capture you alive, Shen De Xiangxing, remained defiant despite her restraints. If you dare to touch Xiao Feng, you'll die an ugly death, she warned, Chu Tianji laughed menacingly. Ha ha ha. You have finally spoken. This also shows that Luo Feng is indeed quite important. He is already on his way to save you. What do you think will happen if I ambush him? Do you think he will die? Ha 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 ha. Shin De Xiangxing, eyes blazed with anger. Chu Tianji, you bastard, just wait and see as I break all of your junior brother's bones, one by one, until every single one of his bones are cracked, Chu Tianji threatened as he moved closer to Shin De Xiangxing, ready to strike. While Li Tianqin pondered his impulsive actions, he realized the potential consequences of his actions. I was too impulsive, he thought, even if I used the video of Shen Weiner's imprisonment to lure Luo Feng here. Even if I managed to kill Luo Feng, wouldn't the people around Luo Feng take revenge against me? Chu Tianji interrupted Li Tianqin's thoughts with a sharp question, you're regretting it? It's too late. There's no turning back now that you've already posted the video. It's about time. Shouldn't he be here by now? As Chu Tianji surveyed the scene, he was baffled. What's going on? What happened here? How come all of my men are dead and there's no movement at all? Xiao Feng, amidst the chaos, demanded answers. Where is my sixth senior sister? He questioned. Chu Tianji, bewildered by Xiao Feng's unexpected strength, responded with disbelief. Aren't you the useless disciple of the seven great absolute martial arts sect? How can you be so strong? Suddenly, a masked figure appeared behind Chu Tianji, prompting curiosity. 
Do you know the true identity of my young master? The figure questioned, Chu Tianji, taken aback, demanded answers. Who are you? And who is he? The masked man revealed the shocking truth, I'll tell you, so that you can die with a clear conscience. His surname is D, i.e., Emperor, before swiftly dispatching Chu Tianji, Li Tianjin's cries for help filled the air as chaos ensued. Meanwhile, Xiao Feng rushed to Shindi Shangxing's side, relieved to find her alive. Sixth senior sister, you're not dead. That's great, he exclaimed, pulling her into a hug. Shindi Shangxing, equally relieved, greeted Xiao Feng with warmth. Xiao Feng, long time no see. In the Dragon City Public Hospital, when Morong Xiao opened the door of the hospital room to see Shindi Shangxing, Xiao Feng and Morong Xiao rushed to her side, embracing her tightly. Sixth senior sister. Sixth sister, if you die, I won't live either. Xiao Feng exclaimed, his voice filled with concern. It's okay, it's okay, I'm completely fine now, reassured Shindi Shangxing, trying to calm them down. Gu Xuanyin, visibly relieved, spoke up, Sixth sister, I'm really happy to see that you're okay. I thought Sixth sister had really died. Morong Xiao, still feeling shaken, gently moved Xiao Feng and Gu Xuanyin aside. That scared me to death. Everyone should calm down now. You're still acting like a kid, she chided them. Suddenly, someone announced, the Empress has arrived. It was eldest senior sister, Empress Hai Xuanting, the supreme and invincible champion, the supreme general, and glory of Huaxia. Murong Xiao inquired, eldest sister, why are you here? Xiao Feng greeted her with a smile, saying, eldest senior sister. However, eldest senior sister kicked him and scolded, you little brat. You didn't even bother to greet me after you came down from the mountain, Xiao Feng replied with a grin, eldest sister has a lot of work to do, so how could I dare to bother you? Morong Xiao, concerned about Xiao Feng's injuries, said, eldest sister, Xiao Feng is injured. Xin De Xiangxing also expressed her surprise, eldest sister, how did you find the time to come and see me? Eldest senior sister explained, it's because of you. The matter of Wan Air's kidnapping involves an overseas martial force, which is why I will be personally investigating the case. She then turned her attention to Xiao Feng and questioned, Xiao Feng, shouldn't you honestly be explaining something? Eldest senior sister showed an image of the masked man and asked, Why is such a high-ranking martial expert working for you? How did you two meet? Who exactly are you? Morong Xiao defended Xiao Feng, stating, Eldest sister, Xiao Feng has been staying in the mountains with Master all this time. There must be some misunderstanding. Xin De Xiangxing also urged Xiao Feng to explain himself. Xiao Feng responded, Eldest sister, this is my secret. Eldest senior sister acknowledged his privacy but issued a stern warning, As your elder sister, I'll respect your privacy, but as the Empress of Huaxia, I will have to kill you. Gu Xuanyin, shocked, exclaimed, Eldest sister, are you, are you crazy? You want to kill Xiao Feng? Murong Xiao intervened and said, If eldest sister disregards the bonds we share from our master, then I will not hesitate to fight back. Eldest senior sister confidently remarked, Second junior sister, you must be aware that you're no match against me. Murong Xiao defiantly replied, That is true, but I can't just watch Xiao Feng die at your hand. Xiao Feng intervened, stopping both Morong Xiao and eldest senior sister. Second sister, if eldest sister really wants to kill me, you won't be able to stop her. Eldest sister, do you trust me? Eldest senior sister asked, trust you with what? Then tell me what your relationship is with that black-robed high-ranking expert. Xiao Feng replied solemnly, eldest sister, I'm sorry, but that is my secret. If you don't believe me, you can kill me here right now. Eldest senior sister retorted, Xiao Feng, do you think that I wouldn't dare to kill you, based on my affection for you? And she kicked Xiao Feng, causing him injury. Despite this, Xiao Feng remarked, I knew eldest sister would never think of killing me. Eldest senior sister warned, if I ever found out that you have betrayed our master, then I will personally get rid of you for him. 
Xiao Feng expressed his gratitude, saying, Thank you, eldest sister, then turned towards Shen De Shengxing, adding, Get well soon. I'll be waiting to see what new drama you're cooking up, before leaving. Eldest senior sister pondered to herself, How great, the kid's body and bones are really quite strong. How did he become so powerful? Her leg trembled from the kick she delivered to Xiao Feng. A few days later, Shen De Shengxing, Morong Xiao, and Gu Xuanyin were gathered in the Gu family discussing recent events. Shen De Shengxing remarked, It looks like Xiao Feng has really grown up and he has his own little secret. Morong Xiao replied, That was no little secret of his. I'm still worried about him. Gu Xuanyin added, Xiao Feng is a bit strange. He seems to have become quite strong, but he still keeps saying that he isn't strong enough. Murong Xiao speculated, I think Master was worried that he would become too prideful and complacent and get into trouble, so he instilled in him the notion that he is very weak. Suddenly, they heard unwanted noise coming from Xiao Feng's room. Murong Xiao wondered, What's all that noise? Gu Xuanyin remarked, Seventh sister, the soundproofing in your house is too bad. Seventh sister replied, I usually live by myself, so what do I need soundproofing for? Xin De Xiangxing mused, Xiao Feng has really grown up and has got his needs. Gu Xuanyin thought to herself, Xiao Feng, why don't you come to me when you have such needs? Xiao Feng was exercising, thinking to himself, eldest sister casually kicked me and made me vomit blood. I'm indeed still too weak. I can't afford to stop exercising. After finishing his workout, Xiao Feng decided, I'll go downstairs and drink some water. As he descended, he saw three of his sisters still awake. All three senior sisters have not gone to sleep yet, he thought, but the sisters misunderstood the noise from Xiao Feng's exercise and Morong Xiao remarked, Xiao Feng, the youth is rampaging with desires. Xin De Xiangxing added, it's normal for young boys to have needs, but you shouldn't make so much movement. Confused, Xiao Feng asked, what kind of movement? Seventh senior sister, why is your face looking so blushingly red? Gu Xuanyin, feeling flustered, exclaimed, a guy with a bad mind. Don't touch me, and hastily ran away. Meanwhile, Xin De Xiangxing received a call from the eldest sister. Hello? Eldest sister? Xiao Feng, curious about the conversation, asked, what's going on? The eldest sister explained, Wanner, I suddenly remembered something. Since Xiao Feng has already come down from the mountain, he has a fiancé who was arranged by our master in the early years, so you should let them meet, Gu Xuanyin protested, no way. I won't allow it. Why didn't master tell me about this? Eldest senior sister calmly responded, Master arranged a fiancé for Xiao Feng. Why would he have to tell you about it? Wanner, I'll send you the details of the girl on your mobile phone later, that's all for now. Xin De Shengxing nodded in acknowledgement, okay, eldest sister. Morong Xiao teased her, what's wrong? You're not really a rabbit who wants to eat grass in its own den, are you? Gu Xuanyin retorted, why would I? I'm just worried that the other girl isn't good enough for our Xiaofeng. Xin De Shengxing intervened, junior sister. I'm afraid you are worrying too much for no reason. The girl in question is the daughter of Master Chiu, Chiu Jiro, from Chiu Yun Mountain City. It's her. Master once said she's a divine golden phoenix who has descended to the mortal world. I really can't compete with her, Xiao Feng expressed his feelings, a fiancé, I don't want one. I have just become an adult, I haven't reached a marriageable age yet. Wanner clarified, it's the eldest sister who wants you to meet her. Xiao Feng, are you going to meet her or not? Upon hearing the elder sister's wishes, Xiao Feng replied, I'll meet her. Three days later, in the cafe of Dragon City Medical University, Xiao Feng entered and thought to himself, second sister said Xiao Jiro is a student at the medical university, and she has already made arrangements for me to meet her here. A lady approached him and said, Hello? Are you the one surnamed Luo? You are late. Xiao Feng thought to himself, I'm not late, I just arrived 20 minutes early. And why does she look different from the photo? 
Was the photo edited too aggressively? Fine, fine, I'll just let her have her way. The girl asked, what kind of car do you have? Where do you live? Where is your family located? Xiao Feng replied, I don't have a car, I don't have a house, I don't even have a driver's license. My family is supposed to be my master who lives in the mountains. The girl reacted, oh my god. What a prehistoric creature have you hooked me up with? The guy is actually a country bumpkin, he doesn't even have a driver's license. It's so lame. Don't tell anyone that you know me. And she left, Xiao Feng thought to himself, but my eldest sister said. Does this mean I have failed? Suddenly, someone called out, Brother Xiao Feng. Xiao Feng asked, Who are you? The girl said, What, you don't recognize me? Who was it that said he would marry me when he was a child? Xiao Feng replied, So you're Chiu Jiro? Chiu Jiro said, Brother Xiao Feng, you have to honor your words and marry me. Xiao Feng cleared his throat and stuttered, That. That was something I had said when I was still a kid, that doesn't count, Chiu Jiro said, It's okay, I know that you're a bit nervous after seeing how beautiful I have become. Let's go somewhere else to talk about it. Where should we? Meanwhile, the sisters wondered if everything went well. They assumed it must have since they're still out this late. Then, they saw Xiao Feng return. Gu Xuanyan asked, Xiao Feng? You're back? Xiao Feng replied, Seventh senior sister, I'm back. But seventh sister looked amazed upon seeing Chiu Jiro. Chiu Jiro introduced herself, Hello, I'm Luo Feng's fiancé. Chiu Jiro, Morong Xiao asked Chiu Jiro, Jiro, what do you think of our Xiao Feng? But Gu Xuanyan intervened and said, he is great. Xiao Feng, what do you think? Do you really want her to be your girlfriend? Chiu Jiro stood close to him and said, of course, he had promised me that he would marry me when he was a kid. Gu Xuanyan chuckled, how funny. Does that even count? Then Xiao Feng had even said that he would marry me when he was a kid. He even slept with me under the same blanket. Chiu Jiro asked, What? Xiao Feng. Didn't you say that I was the only one for you? Gu Xuanyan and Chiu Jiro started to argue for Xiao Feng's affection. Gu Xuanyan asked, Xiao Feng, you don't want to get married yet, right? You should tell her right now that you don't want to marry her. Chiu Jiro insisted, Brother Xiao Feng, tell your seventh senior sister that you are going to marry me, come on. Xiao Feng said, I'm going to lose my mind. Shut up, all of you. And he ran away, but they continued to argue. At night, Xiao Feng came out of the bathroom, thinking to himself, it seems like it's gotten quiet outside. Chiu Jiro should have gone back already, and the seventh senior sister should have gone to sleep as well. Suddenly, someone opened his door. It was seventh sister. Xiao Feng asked, seventh senior sister? You have not gone to sleep yet. Is something wrong? Seventh sister said, Can't I come to you if there is nothing wrong? She pulled Xiao Feng to bed and asked, Tell the seventh senior sister of yours honestly, what do you really think about Chiu Jiro? Xiao Feng replied, I don't think anything about her. I don't feel like getting into a relationship right now. I have some important matters to attend to. Seventh sister said, Xiao Feng, if you really want to, why don't you take a look at me? Xiao Feng said, Ah. Seventh sister, don't. But Gu Xuanyin kissed him and said, You don't want your body is still being quite honest. Xiao Feng said, Seventh sister, don't be like this. I really don't have any thoughts on things like this right now. Gu Xuanyin said, All right. But since that's the case, then you should hurry up and draw a line between you and that Chiu Jiro, and Gu Xuanyin shut the door. The next day at Dragon City Medical University, Chiu Jiro asked, Brother Xiao Feng. Were you looking for me? Xiao Feng replied, Yes, I wanted to talk to you about something. It's about our relationship, I want to. Before completing, Chiu Jiro grabbed Xiao Feng's hand and said, Let's talk about that later. I have to go to a small gathering so you should come along with me. Xiao Feng agreed. 
Jiro entered the room, and her friends exclaimed, Jiro is here. A blue-haired boy asked, you brought a new friend with you. Jiro said, Senior, this is Luo Feng, the one I always mention. Brother Xiao Feng, this is Senior Chu, he's already quite famous in the medical field, he is one of the top among the young scholars. The blue-haired boy asked, Huh? So you're Luo Feng. Chiu Jiro always mentions you. She said that you studied Chinese medicine. May I ask what grade of traditional medicine qualification you have attained? Xiao Feng asked, Does traditional medicine qualification even have a grade? A girl asked, You are not aware that there is a qualification level for traditional medicine? You are not a liar, are you? The blue-haired boy said, Don't say that. Luo Feng has been taught privately by a renowned teacher since his childhood, and the path we take is different. Maybe he really doesn't know. Nowadays, doctors and scholars practicing traditional medicine are all required to take examinations for grades, beginner, intermediate, high, and then up to the special grade and national level. Among them, there are no more than 20 people who are special grade in the entire country. There are only three people at the national level, and one of them is the owner of the Hundred Medicines Hall, who is also my boss, Master Murong Xiao Xiao. Xiao Feng thought to himself, second sister is actually at the national level. That's really impressive. The girl said, Senior Chu Yunfen is the very one and only high-level practitioner in Dragon City. You know, there are not even a hundred high-level practitioners in the entire country. He was specially recruited by the Hundred Herb Hall just a year ago. Xiao Feng asked, Whoa, so you're quite good at it. The blue-haired boy said, Thank you. Come on, have a seat, let's have a chat while. Chiu Jiro said, You guys start chatting. I have to go out to take care of something. After Chiu Jiro left, the blue-haired boy said, Luo Feng, I advise you to stay away from Jiro. I'm the only one who is worthy. Xiao Feng said, No way. You've revealed your true nature of being a licking dog so quickly? The blue haired boy gave a check and said, Fill in the amount for that your agreement. Xiao Feng said, You are going to give me some money too? Do you think you can afford this amount? The girl, seeing the check, said, You are really poor and crazy. You've filled in so many zeros. The blue haired boy said, You are deliberately trying to pick a fight aren't you? Xiao Feng said, it's 2023, and yet you are resorting to such old-fashioned tricks? I think it's you who is deliberately trying to be a nuisance. The blue-haired boy said, I'm warning you. I'm a high-level traditional medicine practitioner of the Hundred Medicine Hall. Do you think you can still get a foothold in the traditional medicine world after messing with me? Xiao Feng said, ha ha ha. Then you can have the Hundred Medicine Hall deal with me. I'll wait for it. While Xiao Feng thought to himself, I'm going to die from laughing, the owner of the Hundred Medicine Hall is actually my second elder sister. Suddenly, Chiu Jiro came and she asked, Huh? What are you doing? The blue haired guy said, Junior sister Jiro, this friend of yours is really quite rude, and the girl said, A few words made him unhappy, so he actually hit someone. Xiao Feng said, Is that so? Initially, I didn't bother with you guys because I was giving Jiro face, but it seems I can't refrain from hitting you guys anymore, Chiu Jiro asked, exactly what is going on here? Xiao Feng said to Chiu Jiro, I can't handle this anymore. I won't be entertaining you anymore, so don't contact me anymore. And leave. Since Xiao Feng left, she also left. The next day, Xiao Feng was training when he got a call from his master. The master said, You little bastard, how dare you leave Chiu Jiro alone? You don't want to have a wife anymore? Xiao Feng said, Master, Chiu Jiro and I are not suitable for each other. The master said, Stop talking about useless things. Let me tell you, her grandpa has already heard that his precious granddaughter has been wronged and has already come all the way to Dragon City to teach you a lesson, so you better watch out for yourself. Xiao Feng said, Master, Chiu is on his way to see me? Isn't he strong? 
The master said, he won't really kill you, but, you better watch out for yourself, and be careful not to get anything cut off from your body. In the headmaster's office of Dragon City Medical University, Chio Jiro and her grandfather were sitting. Chio Jiro said, Grandpa, this is headmaster Bei Yongji of Dragon City Medical University, he has been taking good care of me. The headmaster said, this is something I should do. It's an honor for our teachers and students that Miss Chiojiro is studying here at our university. Chiojiro's grandpa, Grand Masterka, said, There is no need to be polite. That little bastard Luo Feng. Chiojiro asked, Grandpa, you're not going to beat up Brother Xiao Feng, are you? Grand Masterka said, Beat him? I'll just castrate him then feed him to the fish in the river. How dare he bully my precious little Jiro. Chio Jiro said, don't be like that, Grandpa. I asked you to persuade him to marry me, so please don't scare him away. Suddenly, a girl came and said, Headmaster, there is big trouble. Please go quickly and save Chu Yunfan. Luo Feng is about to beat him to death. Outside the campus, Xiao Feng was beating Chu Yunfan. Xiao Feng asked, you want me to apologize to you? You deserve this too.